Welcome back. We are zooming out of markets and zooming into earnings. The earnings season has ended and Motilal Oswal has put out a comprehensive review of the 222 companies they cover. And uh, their one sentence heading is that uh, corporate profitability moderated in the quarter gone by, in the earnings quarter gone by, dragged down largely by metals and oil and gas. That is basically global facing commodities. Consumer also has been a disappointment, but what's worked in favor of the Nifty and Motilal Oswal universe have been banking and auto. To give us a more detailed analysis of the quarter gone by and what do you buy in the quarters to come, Gautam Dugar, head of research, institutional equities at Motilal Oswal Financial Services joins us. Gautam, good morning and thank you very much. It's always educational uh, reading your end of the quarter report. Uh, but uh, the message is not very encouraging. Corporate earnings moderated. Your number of downgrades were more than the number of upgrades. Yeah, hi, Lata. Good morning. Yes, uh, the strength in the earnings that we had seen uh, throughout 2021, 2022, some part of that has started dissipating beginning of FY23. And uh, it is not reflected in uh, the Nifty numbers because Nifty sometimes tend to hide a lot of things. So even in this quarter, if you see Nifty's performance, you have seen a 12% earnings growth in Nifty, expectation was 14%, so nothing wrong. It's only in the broader market the pain is far higher. Now, when I look at my coverage universe for Motilal Oswal coverage of 222 companies, the earnings were flat. We were expecting about 8% growth. Uh, you know, uh, you can dissect this earning whichever way you want. If you are bullish, you can say X of commodities, the earnings growth is 30%, which is bang in line. If you are bearish, you can say X of financials, there is no growth in Nifty, there is 0% growth. For our coverage universe, actually, there was a 14% earnings decline X of financials. We were expecting a flattish number. And most importantly, if I look at our own coverage universe by removing Nifty companies, there was a 18% earnings decline. You know, we were expecting about 3% earnings decline. So Nifty gives you a very different picture than uh, the broader markets. And that is where large part of the pain resides. Plus, the growth that you are seeing in Nifty, as I mentioned, is very narrow. Uh, this time around, auto has contributed significantly and it is happening after a long, long time. So auto has gone through a five years of a down cycle, both in volumes and profitability. And this is the first quarter after last many, many quarters that auto has actually seen a material earnings upgrade. And the breadth to the earnings upgrade in auto sector is also quite high. And of course, financials continues to remain very resilient. Uh, you are obviously going to see a, a financials profit in Nifty this year alone crossing 2 lakh crores. We are at 2.1 trillion. And as I've said before in the past, between FI18 to FI23, the financials profits are up 5x from 45,000 crores to 2 lakh 10,000 crores. But that's the only uh, prettier part of the picture. Most of the other sectors have disappointed. Like auto has been a positive revolution. Consumption has been a, a bit of a concern because there is a broad based consumption slowdown, uh, which is reflected in the numbers, whether you look at staples, discretionary, durables, uh, and of course, two wheelers. So. It's a very mixed picture, uh, slightly concerning, given that the strength of the earnings which was there in 21 and 22, some part of that has dissipated. Okay, uh, fair point. But, you know, more than analyzing the quarter gone by, I'm interested in those pages of your report which are speaking about the quarters to come because that's where we want to know where uh, we can place our bets. Now, let me first come to the Nifty earnings forecast itself. You're expecting the Nifty EPS next year to be at 993 compared to 812, that is the downgraded EPS, Nifty EPS for the current year. That's a good 22% jump. Uh, do you think in the quarters to come, there will be some downward revision to this? Yes, Lata, uh, there are many angles to that number. Uh, first of all, this year in FY23 for Nifty, the 12% earnings growth that you're seeing is purely led by financials and auto. On a full year basis also, Nifty earnings are flat without financials. One of the important changes in FY23 versus FY22, when you look at Nifty earnings, is that commodities earnings have completely collapsed. You know, FY22, when you looked at the picture, Nifty earnings were up 35%, right? right. Without commodities, the Nifty earnings were up 20%. Okay. Right? This year, Nifty earnings without commodities are already up 30%. So commodities, which were a big uplifter last year, have become a big drag this year. 
and next yep. year that is FY24 you are seeing some uh, you know profits uh, uh, coming back so for example in metals if you see the mm. profits were 75000 crores in FY22 yes. uh, in nifty the three companies yes. because 40000 crores came from tata steel last year this year in FY23 the profits in metal space is down to 25000 crores so that's almost one third and next year the expectations are it will be somewhere about 50000 crores so if you look at it on a yoy basis the picture looks slightly more dramatic but if you look at it between fy22 to fy24 metals earnings will still be down and because both metals and oil and gas are such a large part of the profit pool in nifty while their index weight is about 12 13% and their profit pool weight is about 20 25% so whenever things change drastically over there both on upside and downside it has an exaggerated impact on uh, earnings for nifty so next year if you look at pure nifty earnings without commodities the growth is somewhere about 14 15% and not 22% so that is the extra element of uh, uh, growth that you are seeing because commodity profits are making a comeback again in fy24 yeah no i take your point because metals as you uh, I, you know your uh, break up of that 22% metals are contributing 125% clearly because this year they are deeply negative minus 68% in terms of uh, profit uh, uh, fall and therefore uh, there is uh, the low base that's also uh, uh, you know helping but you are expecting continued very good performance by automobiles a 226% rise in profit current year on top of it an 83% rise in earnings next year so uh, automobiles remain one of your strong bets that's where uh, those are the stocks you would chase yes but let me normalize the numbers because this 226% again is a bit of an outlier so what yeah. happened in fy18 the nifty auto universe made a profit of 30000 crores it's exactly the year when banking sector made a profit of 45000 crores now between fy18 and fy23 while banking sector's profit moved from 45000 to 210000 crores auto sector's profit in nifty has come down from 30 to somewhere about 20000 crores oh. right so auto has gone through a five years of profit recession or down cycle whatever you want to call it some of that is now coming back because your volumes are improved especially in pv and cv supply situation has eased uh, especially on semiconductor side and commodity prices have come off so if you look at uh, this quarter's performance also auto was the only sector where you've seen a very substantial and material gross margin expansion of about okay. 360 basis point yoy most of the other sectors had a decline or a very minuscule margin expansion and as i said auto earnings have seen a 25% upgrade for nifty uh, within the nifty auto earnings have been upgraded by 25% now this has happened first time in last many many years uh, except what one or two quarters of the post covid when things started opening up but they came on a very low base here you have seen a 25% upgrade five out of six nifty auto companies have seen an upgrade and going forward our expectation is that as volume stabilizes uh, the impact of operating leverage will also come into play uh so therefore we are expecting that auto cycle which has seen a first year of a decent earnings uh will continue because you're coming okay. on a back of a five years of a no growth or rather degrowth of five years fair enough fair enough uh, so that that explains why auto is doing well well uh, speaking about autos i have to ask you about mother son uh, it was already in your buy list and uh, today they've announced uh, a fairly decent takeover which is going to impact about 10% of their uh, Uh, you know the the size of the company does that make it a stronger buy so lata uh, malasan is already part of our top 10 2023 ideas yes. and uh, numbers were good we had upgraded earnings after the quarter and this acquisition obviously is making uh, sense because it is an eps accredited acquisition for them and adds to their product market as well as customer uh, diversification they've been uh, very aggressive over the last 10 15 years in terms of adding new avenues of growth through in organic route so this is a step in that direction and it just uh, basically uh, we just reiterated our uh, strong positive uh, view on madison which incidentally is a part of our top 10 2023 idea oh yes it is uh, let me come to midcaps because we don't have that much time and that's a large part uh, midcaps disappointed will fi24 be better uh it will be better obviously because it was a very low base but again uh, in mid caps there is nothing called as a sector it's yes. mostly bottom up and uh, company to company depending on which sector you talk about so you will see some improvement there because 
See, consumption-oriented sectors, both staple and discretionary, as I mentioned, have seen a massive slowdown in the last three, four quarters. The companies which have reported a top-line decline on a YOI basis, uh, volume decline, obviously. Uh, companies uh, which are very strong brands in their respective domain with great franchises, they've been reporting seven, eight quarters of a sub-5% top-line growth now. Uh, this being an election year, there are nine state elections, which then culminates into the big one in 2024. I think government will find ways to put money in the hands of people. There will be election spending. Uh, hopefully, that will trickle down and uh, you know, it will have some sort of an impact on consumer uh, spending reviving, which will, with a period of uh, lag of a couple of quarters, should reflect in consumption numbers. So mid-caps belonging to those segments, uh, something like a page or a trend or a... You know, uh, I'm just taking a few names, footwear companies, yes. which have massive slowdown. Some of them can obviously come back into reckoning if, if uh, there is a uh, improvement in consumer sentiment and better consumer spending forward. Then obviously financials, whether it's a mid cap or a small cap or a large cap, have been on a tear. So they will continue to, that's our uh, expectation. Okay. And then yeah, yeah, but within, within financials, uh, uh, Gautam, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm trying to get the most from you. Within oh. financials, do you think the best of PSU... Uh, rally is over. I believe uh, uh, by your analysis, the PSU profit growth was 54% uh, or rather is 54% in the current year. It starts tapering because all the credit uh, uh, cost advantages have been juiced out. So uh, that won't form a part of your buy list? In fact, in fact, it is uh, part of our single largest allocation in our model portfolio. Okay. Uh, we have about 7% allocation to PSU Bank versus a benchmark allocation of a two and a half percent. And our conviction in some of the uh, chosen stocks there, SPI and Bank of Baroda, uh, remains very high. Uh, to your point of this growth not being replicable, it's quite obvious because the base will start working against them now. Uh, you've seen a very strong performance in FY22 and FY23. So to that extent, there will be a normalization of a base. But having said that, private banks started getting the benefit of an asset quality at least one and a half years before PSU banks. So for private banks, the credit cost started declining substantially in FY20, oh, yeah. which happened for PSU banks only in FY22. So to that extent, PSU banks, as far as specific numbers are concerned on credit cost and p &L numbers, they have some more rooms, a few more quarters before their numbers start tapering completely. So, and of course, you know, while valuations have uh, re-rated re to an extent, but so has their ROEs, right? And so far uh, from the commentaries of those banks, it seems that this credit cycle on the credit growth fund is here to stay for at least a couple of more years. Okay. Well, I'm sorry we are out of time, but uh, the big message is that uh, if corporate earnings moderated somewhat in Q3, uh, the prospects for, for FY24 still seem very good. 22% uh, earnings growth only for Nifty EPS, led by automobiles, uh, to, uh, led by metals as well after a very bad base as well by financials and uh, I wish uh, we'll, we'll invite you yet again to discuss all your mid-cap top buys. Uh, we, we ran them as you were speaking. Dalmia Bharat, API Apollo Tubes, uh, Jubilant Food, Poonawala Fincorp, Metro Brands, Angel One, Lemon Tree. Another special session with you to discuss your mid-caps. Thank you very much, Gautam, for joining us. Have to wrap up on Bazaar. Chartbusters up next. <laughs>